Welcome to the Jolly Podcast. I'm your host, Melissa Barrett. This podcast is for those who are interested in the conversation around diversity, inclusion, and equity. Each week, I'll be interviewing a guest who has something special to share or is actively part of building solutions in this space. Let's get started. Recently, I was interviewed for the Audiobook Connection podcast with host Becky Parker Geist. Becky is the CEO of Pro Audio Voices, providing audiobook and podcast production and marketing. She's also president of the Bay Area Independent Publishers Association and the producer for the Jolly podcast. I am excited to have with me today Melissa Barrett. Melissa is the host of the Jolly podcast, and she is an advocate for diversity, inclusion, social, and economic justice. She's vice president at Visa Incorporated and has worked primarily in the areas of risk and product, developing and maintaining products in the areas of identity, security, business intelligence, predictive data models, and bankruptcy, while optimizing solution delivery for clients. She has sponsored and supported diversity and inclusion groups to amplify the voice of those that are underrepresented in organizations. She lives just outside of the San Francisco Bay Area in California, where she raised her three children and enjoys spending time with her six grandchildren. Welcome, Melissa. Hello, Becky. I'm so excited to be here. Hey, so I know that um, I'm just like to jump right in, but I know that one of the things that when we first started talking about your podcast was that you have a message to get out to the world. So I thought maybe we would just start right off with what is that message that you're trying to get out to the world? Well, so I think probably the first thing that I would say is From the jolly, everyone is a storyteller. So my husband was a professional storyteller. He focused specifically, his practice focused on African diasporan stories because they weren't being told. And so one of the things, one of the main reasons that I really started the jolly podcast was to really start getting people to talk, to make people aware of stories that aren't being told, but to really highlight diversity, equity, and inclusion, and the people that are that should be celebrated because they are, in fact, doing the work. Whether you're an author, whether you're, you know, a corporate business person, everybody's hands yeah. work differently, but everything we do is really connected to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Like no matter what business you're in, there is some element of it that you have to think about that you want to make sure that you're impacting the world in a positive way for everybody. Yeah, oh, that's great. So it really is focused around the storytelling. Yeah, I mean, I think I always start with kind of like, how did you get here? What has your journey been like? Because I think that to me is so so much of how we learn to share different experiences and then getting into how people are impacting the world with their work is kind of my my secondary focus. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. And and why is that important to you? Well, I think I was raised, my father was always in the community working. And so my sister always says that I inherited his philanthropic kind of focus. And so to me, if you're at the table, you know, and we need to be at the table, if you're not at the table, (laughs) pull up a chair, right? Then (laughs) I just feel like, you know, if we're at the table, we need to be making the impact that we want to see. And we have to advocate for ourselves and we, you know, we need to be, be there. I mean, all of the burden is not on us, but we need to be making sure that people understand our perspective. Yeah. And this speaks very directly to something that I bring up on my podcast frequently because, you know, I'm talking to authors and other people in the audiobook industry. And, and I think that one of the most important things that we can get clear on early on is where we're going, you know, like what is our biggest goal with 
the work that we're doing. You know, as you said, you know, our hands are working in different ways. I, I love the way you put that. And do you, and you may have already answered this, but I'm going to ask it just in a different way. Did you have a specific goal when you started your podcast? Well, so my goal when I started the podcast was to really begin to understand what is being done and how things are being done. That was my biggest goal was really to learn. And, you know, I think I have worked at one company for almost 30 years. (laughs) So it's like I knew a lot about how that company did it, but I wasn't sure how, how is it working in other places? Are they having some of the same challenges that I've seen, you know, and what are people doing about it? And so for me, it was, it was really my way of connecting with other industries, other people, you know, whether they were CEOs or analysts or authors or speakers or whatever, there was all these different perspectives that I was just craving to understand more about what's happening in the world and how do we channel all of these, you know, perspectives and to get to where we really want to go. Because, you know, if you say the system is broken, what system are we talking about? And, yeah. <laughs> you know, how how do all these systems work together? Yeah. So That is so cool. Uh, you know, so often we think about podcasting as like, Uh, kind of the way I started out with you have a message that you're trying to get out there. And now what you've really expressed to me is that you are engaged in a process of inquiry. And the beautiful thing about this is you're sharing that process and that whole all every step of the way in that inquiry with us as your listeners. Yes. As I'm as I'm learning, yeah. right? Everyone gets to learn right along yeah, with me. So. Yeah, that is so yeah. cool. So I know that uh, you know a part of your focus, as you've expressed, is equity, inclusion, and and uh, diversity. And how do you find? So I'm going to ask a question about guests because yours is an interview show as part of your inquiry. How do you find the guests that you bring on to the show? You know, that's an interesting thing because I think I started just by looking around me to people that I knew. Mm -hmm. And I think most podcasters find that it becomes challenging, right? Because you're, you're always looking for somebody and then you go, oh my gosh, let me call my friend and, you know, I'll get them on. (laughs) But for me, it was kind of like, my experience, and, and I'm still experiencing it, it is the most phenomenal thing I have ever seen where the people that I'm talking to, typically I am just meeting so many new people. And then those people that I'm talking to introduce me to other people. And it is it is just profound, the number of new relationships that I've had, the perspective. And I mean, just, I have made some just phenomenal friends. And I don't know if the fact that it's been during the pandemic that this has happened, but now I've even had the opportunity for people that I haven't actually had the privilege to meet in person. And we forged a relationship. It's finally now that we're able to actually get together, you know, go to a restaurant, have dinner and really kind of amplify the relationship even more. So, and there's, you know, I mean, there's just so much interesting work and and things going on that I'm just excited about life in general. That is really exciting. What a journey. Yeah. Do you have any like set of criteria for your podcast guests or who are you looking for? Or or is it not that, you know, give me some insight into that world. Yeah. So as I think about social, you know, social impact, that is kind of one of the things that to me makes the most significant difference. So when we're talking about diversity, equity and inclusion, yes, there are so many things that we should be doing to make people aware and awareness, not only, you know, just externally, but an awareness that is a very personal journey for many people who maybe haven't been aware of things that they don't know or things that they didn't know were as bad as they mm. were. <laughs> and so I think I think that journey is one piece of it. 
But for me personally, I'm trying to connect the dots to the social impact that actually needs to be made. And so most of the time when I'm looking for guests, I really want to hear from them their journey because typically their journey has some form of social impact in it. The authors, for example, that I have interviewed, they are impacting others as they go in a variety of ways, you know, whether it be going to the White House to visit Michelle Obama with a right. <laughs> with a speaker or whether they are journeying from Africa, you know, one country in Africa to Washington, D.C. as a a space engineer, right. yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it's just amazing the the stories that we see in terms of, you know, how were people able to make those impacts and what did what opportunities did they have on their journey because of some company or some sponsorship that made it possible for them to, you know, experience that journey. And so it's a lesson not only in how the people transition, but along the way, if there's a sponsor, you know, we talk about corporate sponsorships a lot, but it's like, they're not telling the story of the impact that it makes on people when they experience that. And a lot of times you won't know for maybe decades, but the impact, you know, makes a difference. That's really cool. So the the two things that it, it seemed like you really touched on strongly there, one is that individual story. And I love that because, you know, I think that probably most of us have this feeling that we are, you know, this, you know, just sort of struggling along or, or whatever, but not even always recognizing the our own kind of milestone moments, right, until we can look back on them. But hearing other people's stories and how, oh, wow, that thing happened to you and that was or that you did that thing and it ended up with this big impact is very inspiring. And inspiration yeah. is so powerful. And yes. then and then the second piece being about what are the systems that are in place that are having an impact and calling those into our awareness, because I think also then, you know, if we are starting to recognize, oh, this program, that program, you know, that there are all these other things going on out there that, you know, if we're feeling like, oh, you know, the world's just going down the tubes, if we're listening to your podcast and hearing these stories, we're not only being inspired by others' stories, but also seeing or hearing that there are other things in place that are making a difference. And, and that that's both inspiring and in, and can help us recognize what programs are out there. So anyway, thank you for all yeah, that. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. So in an interview, this is going to step into a little bit more on the hosting side of things, but in an interview... Like, how much do you prepare questions in advance and how much do you find yourself just kind of picking up on what your guest says and sort of riffing in in a different direction? What would you say? So I would say I do spend time really kind of thinking about where I want to go just more generally, but also just understanding their background and some of the things that they're doing. Mm -hmm. But I find, because I know there's a lot of podcasters out there that will send you tons of questions and, you know, they want you to prepare and that way you'll be, you know, maybe you feel more comfortable because you've already thought about the answer Mm -hmm. and all of that. I would say my podcast, I prefer to just really be present and have a conversation with somebody. And so... While, you know, if they ask me for questions and I will give them probably, you know, maybe five or six questions, Mm -hmm. because I find that if you have four or five different questions, you have a longer conversation um, that can go deeper than if I give you, you know, 25 different questions to answer. Right. Right. But what it what it allows me to do is really be present with them so that I'm not looking at my paper and going, wait, what's the next question I was going to ask? It's more about like 
just picking up on what they're saying and diving in to who they are, what they're doing and what those impacts are. So, yeah. So I find that, you know, for me, it's it's less about the structure and the platform is just so powerful now to be able to just have those conversations and really tell the stories. I mean, at the end of the day, Jali, you know, which is a West African term for storyteller. I mean, the storytellers of the day were following royalty around and making sure that from an oral tradition, their generations and generations were hearing those stories. The platform we have today really allows us to keep those stories and hopefully they'll be around for years and years. So yeah, that's great. Let's pause for a moment. We'll be right back. What would you say are some of the things that you've, if you just maybe pull out one or two things that you've learned from your guests in the the process that maybe have been surprising or just especially inspiring? I don't know. If, are there a couple moments you, you can pull out? that? Oh, my gosh. So many. <laughs> well, that I in mean, itself is great. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, well, and it's what's fun about it is that the diversity of the interviews that I've had. I mean, people have been in public service. They've been in, you know, corporate positions. I mean, they're high in the company. They might be lower in the company, new to the workforce. I mean, there's so many different aspects of it. And I think, gosh, I don't know. I mean, probably one that was interesting and definitely a teachable moment is I was interviewing Cordero Davis, He works in inclusion and diversity, fairly young and somewhat early in his career. I imagine lots coming from him. But he he talked about the fact that in his journey, which, you know, in high school, they still were have had segregation. And and we're talking like this is like recent. Oh my God. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like only a few, some years ago that it, it went away. And it was just like one of those, wait, what year is it? It's yeah. 2021, right? So, so that had to be one of the, mo- one of the more shocking moments mm-hmm. um, because of, you know, he came from the South and, you know, they're obviously still struggling with lots of that. But his, his story was, was very interesting. And then, I mean, I keep going back to Monique Nelson, uh, who's the CEO of UWG. And she talks, you know, I started this because of my corporate background. Yeah. And she talked a lot about the frozen middle when it comes to management in terms of how they focus on diversity and inclusion. And she also talked about having a she had an office in New York that she when she took over the company And she went there and it was a completely all black employee base Uh in that office. And she she was like, I mean, that's not the way it's supposed to be. (laughs) You know, she's she's like, you know, we need diversity in in every aspect. Right. So she was one of the ones as the new CEO who actually brought in the first white person. Uh And, you know, she made sure that there were systems in place to make that person feel comfortable and then diversify the office. So almost the other way, which I thought was really interesting. Yeah, I remember that that interview was really, it was very interesting and yeah, very cool. Yeah, I mean, there's just been so many. I could go right. on and on. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, let's take a look at a different side of this podcasting question. And what would you say has been the hardest thing, the most challenging thing about doing the podcast? The most challenging thing. I think it's probably, so when I started, for me, I loved podcasting because it was just about a voice. You know, it's like being on the radio. Nobody has to actually see who you are or what you look like. And that's not to say I didn't mind being seen, but I think I have... I have had to transform in being okay with being out there Uh more, more than I'm used to. Mm -hmm. Um, And 
And so with social media and all of that, I think, you know, when you say that you you want to be vulnerable and you want to really kind of be your authentic self, um, it becomes kind of challenging to go, well, yeah, I want to be my authentic self, but I don't want everybody to see me all the time, you know? Right, right. <laughs> I want to have my own privacy and, you know, so not that I'm some big star or anything, clearly mm-hmm. not, but, but it's just, you know, being out there, knowing that, you know, content and everything is out there for, you know, once you put it out there, it's out there. So, yeah, yeah. I think that's been challenging for me, just kind of being okay with social media posting and, you know, just kind of continuing to engage and have the conversation on a much more massive scale. Yeah. And and speaking of that, how are you f- learning about the impact that you're having with your podcast? Do you know? You know, it's interesting because I think the podcast is almost now a piece of it. So one of the things on my own journey that I'm finding is, you know, having engaged with a person on my own personal brand. And it was like, all of a sudden they were like, yeah, you're doing all these things, but you have your own personal brand. You need to like, you know, think about it in that sense. And then it was almost like the podcast is over here. And then there's, you know, all these other things that I'm doing that kind of fit together and it may be kind of eclectic, right, right. but it is who Melissa Barrett is. <laughs> so, so it, I think when I started kind of thinking of it that way, the podcast became a component of my product set, you know, and I come from the product area. So I'm like, okay, I have, as a person, I have all these different products that I'm trying to deliver. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that we've looked at analytics on occasion, you know, for your podcast. And I, I want to mention, well, let me, let me ask this. Uh, do you hear from people by email or in comments somewhere about your podcast? I mean, are you getting some feedback? Yeah. You know, so social media is wonderful because it does allow people to give you mm-hmm. comments and you get feedback pretty much right away. Um, whether uh-huh. people like something or not, you tend to see whether those hearts are hitting or not. So, I mean, it, it's nice. nice to, <laughs> you know, and and friends of mine will certainly call me <laughs> and, or send me a text or, you yeah. know, they might say, oh my God, this was the best episode yet or, you know, whatever, um, to just continue to inspire. But I think a lot of times, you know, when I started, I didn't necessarily view podcasting with the amazing platform that it is for voice, for perspective, for, you know, engagement. And it has just been a blessing to me to be able to highlight these wonderful folks as I, as I continue my own journey. So, yeah, yeah, that's great. So for others who may be listening and feel like, they're thinking about podcasting. They have something. Maybe it's an maybe it's an inquiry of their own, or maybe it's a message that they feel like is, uh, you know, that they have some expertise or or inspiration to share. What advice, if anything, what tips might you share with them as they get started? Well, I would say first of all, you know, let me give a shout out to Pro Audio Voices here. Thank you. <laughs> because <laughs> Becky and her team are phenomenal in what they do and what I have truly appreciated is you know, sometimes I have felt stuck like I'm not sure, you know, maybe I have a gap and you know, I freak out cuz I have a gap or whatever. And you have always been one of those people that are like I think you should record this and do it, do this. Or, you know, I mean, there's like these wonderful ideas that come out of being stuck. If you just have a conversation with somebody else or somebody cares enough to give you some mentorship. Um, And I find that there are mentors, way more mentors around me than I anticipated. And so I love the fact that, you know, you can dial into expertise you know, but you can also have a bad day and forgive yourself and 
plan the next day, you know? <laughs> so I think if you, you know, this is, this is amazing opportunity to utilize your voice to impact your community, whoever that community is in a way that nobody else can. Cause I think everybody has such a unique voice and perspective and we should use it. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Is there anything else that you would like to share about either about your podcasting experience or your message or any of the episodes that you have recorded? I just, this is sort of that open-ended. Anything else that you think, ah, oh, I'd just like to share this with that audience? What might that be? Well, I always want to ask people to subscribe. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> Very good. Because you always need subscribers. But I think, you know, I think I would say, you know, I think one of the things that I went into it being very kind of professional corporate, and I have realized that my professional and personal life begins to converge. It it began to converge, you know, a while back. And I think, I think most people maybe, maybe theirs converge a lot earlier in life than, than mine has. But I feel like I want to make sure that personally I'm accomplishing what I want to accomplish so that my professional activities really kind of amplify my personal mission. And I think for the most part, it has been a real treat for me to be able to learn more about myself as I have gone through the podcasting experience. Because I think, you know, a lot of times it's one thing when you're in the room with someone, but when you realize that there are people listening to you that you may not even know, and you could potentially be making a difference for them, it just puts your whole life into a different perspective. For me personally, it, it, it has. So um, I just encourage people you know, be open. Life is a journey. Nobody has all the answers. But, you know, when we when we learn better, we do better. And, you know, let's let's continue to engage and have the conversation. That's beautiful. What a beautiful way to wrap up. Thank you so much. Again, this is Melissa Barrett. She is the host of the Jolly podcast. That's J-A-L-I. And you can find it on all the podcasting platforms. Melissa, thank you so much for being with me today. Thank you, Becky. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for joining me on the Jolly Podcast. Please subscribe so you won't miss an episode. See you next week. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.